they are going to pick up on it. I mean, they, I, I think those, these beings are so perceptive and empathic and hypersensitive to their environment that um, if you're coming to their, to the trees where they are and you're filled with that fear and the belief that they're something bad, um, they're either going to want to chase you out or they're going to want to have Robert here from Swan Lake Bigfoot and um, this is going to be my new backdrop. Maybe down the road a little bit I'm thinking about a podcast and it's a good way for me to, I mean it's, it's a whole nother um, social media outlet which I think we could use and like I say if any of you are interested and any of you guys would be willing to come on there and we, you and I or, or other researchers uh, that would be a good idea too. Um, even if it's if it's ones that are just starting out, I would be all for uh, helping you out and, and supporting you if, if if it's something you'd like, right? And I think uh, the podcast might be a way to do some of these other things that I've wanted to do, but I can't really do with the. I can do the live streaming, but uh, it would I could only do that from my house because I think three of the three of the locations I go to, I have no cell phone service if things go wrong um, not with Bigfoot uh, and I'm sure there are some out there that will say oh yes it's you know there's all these horror stories and I'm having so many issues with that with people there, there's so much of the doom and gloom right these, these doom and gloomers and you know the monsters and the cannibals and there's that narrative and there I just keep being bombarded with questions and emails about that. And I think as we go along, as we go further along here, uh, we're gonna get these new ones that are still coming in, into the Bigfoot well, family. Um, they're coming in with those, with, you know, it's almost like a conditioning, right? It, it, that's what happens when you're hearing, you're hearing rhetoric or, or a narrative pushed over and over and over and over, people that's, that's, people just start thinking in that way about about certain things, right? And that's what's happening in our Bigfoot community. You see, there's a lot of people that don't consider um, the danger it is for them as humans going out there. Uh, if you go out there with that kind of thinking and feelings and uh, belief about these beings, do you think they're gonna wanna have anything to do with you? And do you think maybe they might want to throw a rock at you and, uh, and or chase you out of the bush? <laughs> There's this narrative being pushed and it's, it's continuous, right? It's constant, it's noise, it's like white noise and, and it's conditioning. What I've been trying, and it's been one of my missions, one of my motives, my objectives is to uncondition. But it's that noise, it's that it's that narrative, it's that rhetoric, and, and it's and the community's kind of soaked it up, and it has a, everything to do with our state of mind, everything, um, where we are at in our thinking and our feelings, and they are going to pick up on it. I mean, they, I, I think those, these beings are so perceptive, and empathic, and hypersensitive to their environment that um, if you're coming to their the trees where they are and you're filled with that fear and the belief that they're something bad um they're either going to want to chase you out or they're going to want to have nothing to do with you it has a lot to do with the safety of of the researchers and people <clears throat> and people that are going out there and and trying to find them or or film them any of those that are going out there to cause danger or harm to them um same thing right they're gonna see you or hear you coming for 
a long ways before you even get there, and they're not going to be there. They're not going to be there for you to harm them. And of course, we're dealing with the doubters and the doubters and the naysayers and the the fear mongers, right? And uh, don't become a fear monger, please. <laughs> you you want to make a comment? Keep the comments respectful. Um, I'm just you know I'm getting to the point. There's so many of them now that I just delete, right? I have to. Um, it's, it's kind of sad. I feel sad for them because, you know, it's just empty. Like, what kind of person is spending time going to these channels just to do that, right? Uh, whether it is to harm, hurt me, insult me, uh, and bother the people. Because all of you read these comments, right? It's, it's an open forum. It's a community, right? Uh, Bigfoot community. You can just go onto anybody's channel and read what's going on, whether it be a video or but there are a group. And that's, it, it seems to be their full intent on causing, causing havoc. It's a bullying tactic, and that's, that's a big thing we have to deal with now with social media and all these social media platforms, right? But, I mean, I knew that coming in, and as we go further and as that happens more and more, uh, it, it, I, it's almost becoming amusing. And, um, but... We kind of just got to take all that with a grain of salt. And I ask that of you guys too, because it does stress, it does stress the subscribers out, right? And other people that come on to, whether it's a video or the channel itself, they read these comments and, and it does, it does bother quite a few people. I get a lot of people, uh, I have a lot of people suggesting uh, to, you know, do like so-and-so or um, why don't you try, uh, this channel's doing this, why don't you try that? I don't, uh, somebody suggested, I think there's a re researcher out there, she puts out a whole lot of trinkets and stuff and spreads them out, I think, on her deck, on her, on her front deck and her back deck, and, and I, I guess the Bigfoot moves stuff and take things and move things around, and that would never work here. <laughs> uh, I have a, two pet squirrels. And I have a pet magpie who brings me um, bundles of wool or cotton. I'm not sure where he or she is getting it. And you know, I have, and then I have a little flock of birds that come and sit on my back deck and and drop twigs. I don't know why they do it. And then if I put anything out there on my deck or on my steps or anything, the squirrels are there, right? Uh, the squirrels, they take, um, they just take and leave and there would always be movement, and there would always be things missing, and I can't have that happening and then try selling that to you guys as if as if that's Bigfoot, right? I, I couldn't. Even if I didn't see what moved them and took them, I, I don't want to, there's too many variables there, right? There's too many things that, there's other animals that do similar things, and I kind of want to stay to the things that I know. I've always said when the Bigfoot here do things, they do things big, right? You cannot miss it. You can't, um, like, flipping the roof of my shed, right? And moving the, playing with the boulders and stones on my water tank, uh, a squirrel or birds and things like that. They can't lift those, right? They can't move them around. And then they leave me the bones. They're always gifting me with bones. That's... That's something very specifically Bigfoot. I'm learning, right? I've learned this. Um, Seven Creeks in the Gifting Bowl, they gifted me bones. Here, they brought me bones. So, and then the gifting site here, uh, uh, some people said, oh, well, it could be birds. There's no birds other than owls that fly around at night and they don't eat crackers. You know, they're looking for mice and rodents. They're raptors, right? They're meat eaters. And I can go out 20 minutes after I put out the, the treats, the gifts, and they're gone. Right? They're gone. And I go by like, with the vocals I hear from the, from the gifting site and the anomalies, right? We, you know, for those that have just come on board, there's, there's orbs. I've picked up orbs. I've picked up audio. Um, you know, weird light anomalies coming from the gifting site. And so again, I want to stick to the things that I know are Bigfoot and that I, I'm sure are Bigfoot and not, you know, do these random things. And here's a good example of that. Uh, my sister had an idea. This was a few years back and um, 
to put stones on these nice stones on the back railing of my deck. And I did, I had six there, kind of spread out about a foot apart from each other. And six o'clock in the morning, I happened to wake up and I think it's good that I did because um, I watched the magpies make six trips back and forth. They took each stone. Uh, and they weren't very big. They took, made six trips there and took the stones from my back deck. And like I say, I've said it before, when Bigfoot do things, they do things big. So you cannot m miss it. That's what I'm experiencing here. So we'll just continue on that line of thinking and that kind of, um, that kind of approach to the subject and uh, kind of just answer that because I've had that suggested a few times. M maybe that's something she's having success with and that's her thing, right? Um, it's hers, it's what she does and I, I kind of just want to leave that alone. You guys, one of the subscribers mentioned to put my trail camera inside my house in my window facing out. And I don't know why I never ever thought of that because it is a good idea, right? And they're either trying to knock them down, untie them, or just not be around them. And I think what I need to do, I think trying to deceive them, we're trying to fool them, right? We're trying to fool them. And I think that, I don't want to do that really. And I thought, put more thought on it, and I thought, what am I doing, right? Everything else I've done, I've approached it straightforward. And I've asked for permission. I've, I've you know, I'm always saying thank you. And then I turn around, try to fool them, try to hide something from them, you know. I'm going to show them the red light and I'm going to say, if you want uh, for, for others to see or hear you or for me to hear and see you, um, this I will if you come in front, right, of this red light. It's always been about me asking them and they are in the driver's seat. Whatever they decide to do, uh, we'll be okay with. And, I feel better about it and I think they will feel better about it because I'm being honest with them and they understand what I'm doing and it's there, right? I wanted to address the, the uh, um, you know, using other researchers' um, techniques or, or, you know, the ways they're, they are doing things with their research. I kind of don't want to be duplicating that and I think before I would even, I would ask them if you know, if they were okay, if I could do that as well, if I could, you know, try to do what they're doing, I would talk to them first. Researchers know the wood knocks are there, the vocalizations, you know, the whoops, and the, I use the wood, the stick to, to make the wood knock sounds, and I've learned that my flute and my hand whistles, my loon calls are the better whistles to use with them, not the harsh whistle that we do. Um, get in trouble for that, so I don't do it anymore. So I've learned on my own what works for me and um, and I think a lot of people are doing similar things but in their own way, right? Third, I want to touch on the subject of my dog, right, of Sammy. I even had emails and people are angry that I'm taking Sam out there with me. I, I don't force Sammy to do anything. Sammy is his own puppy and he can come with me if he chooses to and he's a smart dog. He knows when they are around, he doesn't, he doesn't come with me. It's just that simple. And even if, you know, we start out, he's, there's times where he, we've started out and we've got about a quarter of a mile, especially when I'm walking west here to that two mile location. And we get about halfway there and all of a sudden, he's gone, he's gone home. They're not going to hurt Sammy. They know Sammy's love. They know I love Sammy and I think to hurt Sammy would hurt me. I think maybe if it was a clan that um, I come on to and I took Sam, I, and which I don't do, Sammy stays home. Uh, he's our farm dog, he's our watchdog. He takes care of the farm. This is his property, right? His territory. And he will not get in a vehicle with me anyway. <laughs> he was a rescue dog. He was from an abusive setting and he came, he literally came here from about five, six miles away barely alive and he was only a year a year old obviously the, the place he came from um for some reason you know he's scared of the vehicle the closest he's ever come and it's only with me anybody else that comes here with the vehicles he stays away from the vehicle until they're all out 
um, with me when I come, you know, whether I'm out uh, shooting on a location or I have to take a trip into, into the city. Um, when I get home, he will jump up on my lap, keep his back legs on the ground, his back feet on the ground, but he'll jump up and, and he's greeting me, right? And that's his, that's, that's his greeting and we're okay with all that, right? Uh, we're okay with that, but they're okay with Sammy. There was a lesson he had to learn and I haven't got a chance to tell that story yet. And it is a, it's kind of a scary story and an important story about Sam. And, and his relationship with these, say, with these Bigfoot, uh, this clan here at the farm, right? And there was a lesson to be learned on all sides, mine, Sam's, and theirs. And we did, we learned it, but it was a, a pretty intense situation. Uh, so Sammy is okay. And just keep in mind that Sammy, when they're around, he's, he, will, he will actually want to go in the house when they're in the yard or if they're near the place. He doesn't only, he stays out of it. And so he's okay, I'm okay, the Bigfoot are okay. We're doing good, right? We're doing good. So we've got possibly a podcast. Let me know what you guys think of that. Uh, Sammy's good. We're all good. Um, uh, we'll stick to our own research. And if you guys have any, have any unique, one-of-a-kind ideas that you think might go with what we're doing here, um, you know, we can try them and, um, but we'll stick to our own, our own approach to this. And, you know, I got to follow what he feels is right. What my, what I'm picking up, uh, like I say, being an empath, I pick up a lot from them. Right. And sometimes it's too much and I have to say it's too much it means I got to follow my gut and, and make decisions based on that. You know, we'll, we'll work out our own ways of, of doing the research here with Swan Lake Bigfoot. Uh, and thank you to all the new subscribers that have come on board. I hope you stay. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to comment on the videos. I always, I will acknowledge, if I, if I don't answer them, I'll acknowledge them because I go, I read every single one, right? And I answer every single email. And whether it's on Facebook Messenger, through the email, I'll put the email here on the screen if you guys want to email me at any time, right? If you have a story to share, um, or if you guys are interested in possibly doing these call-ins um, on the podcast. And yeah, there's a lot of things we can do with the podcast that I can't do here. I will, we will work towards a live streaming. And like I said, I think the only location I'll be able to do that is here in the yard or in my house, uh, the other locations, I've got no cell phone service or data service. So like they're out in the bush, the places that I go, like there's no people living in these areas and, and uh, there's no cell phone towers or anything. So anyway, I will sign off there. Uh, I wanted to just touch bases with you guys. Um, we're still getting, you, the last video I uploaded with the Bigfoot track, um, all the snow was going away. We got another almost half a foot of snow. I can't complain because I think that's a, that's going to serve us well in the spring and the summer. We'll have a lot of ground moisture for our hay fields and our crops and our gardens and, and all that good stuff, right? So I'm not going to complain.